Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is one of the CTFs from Hacker One. From Hacker One, uh, the one I'm going to be doing is called Pet Shop Pro. It is an easy one, and I rec I strongly recommend it for anyone who's trying to get into bug bounties because it's very simple. It has some of the methodologies that you would do do on a on any other CTF like on Try Hack Me or Hacker One. Uh, and as you can see, there's I already did this, so there's three total flags. Um, so for the first one, as you can see, I already put an item in the cart. The The hints basically says that you shouldn't pay for something. So when I was playing around with this, I clicked, um, I would just add things to the cart and I would go here and check the cart. And I always inspect uh, the elements or just view the source code of the form of the page. And I noticed that there's this that this button, the checkout button, sends a post request. And as you can see, there's a hidden thing, a hidden um, uh, type. So if you take that out, it puts it gives you this whole information here, which is in JSON format. And you have the zero, which is the ID of the uh, of the item. You have the logo and its title. You have the price, how much it costs, the name, and a description. So basically what you're doing here is you're intercepting this request. It's like intercepting this request in Burp. And you can modify it before you get before it gets sent out. So I what I did what I my idea was okay so maybe I if this was a real web page right like Amazon or whatever and I can do this well why why would I pay for something so the typical thing would be well let's just put zero here and see if the server or the obviously or the browser will do some type of validation on the input and say wait there this zero is not correct but we might as well try so what I do um, is change it to zero and send it and here you go here's your first flag so that was a pretty easy one the second flag that we're gonna look at is is basically the hint says that the that the web page should be a minister right obviously um, a what this type of web page where you're gonna be set buying stuff and someone has to be able to manage it um, change the prices input new products so my idea was straight up straight out to do admin maybe there's an admin page nothing okay so a quicker way is to use a directory brute force like go buster dirt search or my favorite uh, ff F of, yeah so I'll show you how I ran it so I ran it as f of um, the URL fuzz because you want to you want to add all the directories from this word list here I am using the seclist word list just because it has common um, endpoints and it's a little quicker and I'm using dash dash t for threads makes it faster I'm gonna color the output and show me the output so I'm gonna run this and the first thing you get cart okay and then we're again looking for something that symbolizes a some type of login page And the cool part about um, FF is because it's written in Go, just like GoBuster, it is really fast. Um, the thing that I like about FF over GoBuster is that they implemented the and the ability to do recursion. So, which means that once it once the the tool found okay, there's a cart directory, then it's gonna um, f automatically do directory boot forcing. On this direct on this subdirectory and then keep doing it until there's no more which is definitely real 
something really cool that is useful. Uh, when you're trying to find like bug bounties and company companies are probably gonna have different uh, subdirectories and uh, and it's a good way to find anything that's hidden that they think you can't find but in reality you do Hmm. Okay, so this seems like it did not work. Um, let me do this again. Okay, as you can see, yeah, this time they actually found the login. So we can go here and do login. Yeah, sometimes um, if you see that there's errors, then try stopping the, the tool and then rerunning it. So, so we have a login page. The first thing I'm going to do is check for default credentials, admin, admin nothing okay well I see that there it says in the username well that's telling me that username enumeration okay so the username does not work but what about okay the username doesn't work but let's see if I can do um, SQL injection nothing so let's try admin double quotes or uh, one equals one and then we'll do a Nope. Okay, so SQL injection seems not to work because even with the single quote or double quote, there's no error. It just keeps telling me invalid username. So the another way is okay. We have to figure out what username is a, is working. So we can use Hydro, which is a brute forcing tool. Now you could use um, another tool like. Uh, Bert, if you have the professional edition, because the community edition throttles your um, your intruder, so it takes a lot of time, and sometimes the um, out the output's not accurate. So I I've already ran it and ran Hydra, and I'm actually going to take I've uh, cut up some some of the names from the sec list uh, names. And I'm actually going to use the uh, usernames and the text list, which has the correct username and other usernames as well, just for the sake of time. Um, the lowercase p, it just means use this password. Now, this password is completely incorrect. It's, uh, but again, I'm not trying to get the correct password right now. I'm trying to figure out what's the correct username. Uh, I'm using 40 threads here's the IP address that you need to put or again it could be like the web page um, or the domain the the form is an HTTP post form and then here you need to add the directory where your page where your page is which is this um, then you'll add the input fields which is username and then the capital user and password capital pass which means it's going to input this uh these this list here and then that password here and then you have invalid username which is the error message 
So, and this is important because Hydra is actually going to use this error message to give you, to see, okay, it, I don't have, I don't see this again. Um, I don't see this output, so I ha it must be the correct username. So this is very important. If not, you'll, you won't get the correct output. So now I'm going to run it. And... So I'm just going to let it uh, run and it's now it's going to run. <clears throat> and with the list of names, it'll probably take some time still, but not that long. So we'll just wait until we get the correct. Um, oh, you see, there it is. So the username is Clo, uh, but we can check we can test it out and see. And then I'm going to put test. OK, so now you notice we get invalid password. Okay, so we know the username is Clo. So now I want to do the. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm actually going to take erase this and I'm going to put lowercase l because I just want to use one username, which is Clo, and then uppercase p because I'm going to use a list. And again, I did the same thing with the passwords. I created a, a just a shorter list of passwords. You can run Brock you or you can run a, any type any like um, I think I ran the top 500 common passwords it will take some time um, but for the sake of this video again I'm just using a shorter list and then if you noticed there it's instead of invalid username it says invalid password so I'm gonna just change this to invalid password okay and I'm going to bump the threads up to 64 just uh, make it faster why not and there you go it, with my list my list wasn't long it only had what it only had 90 um, the size is 90 so it's not bad but yeah the password is news okay so let's try and see clo news and there you go now I'm locked now I'm logged in and here's your second fly and for the third flag, it's basically says to test every input, right? So when it comes to input, it's either obviously going to be can be SQL injection, but for SQL injection, it has to be dealing it has to be dealing with a database, right? So it's basic. It's most likely be like search bars or login credentials because that has to fetch information from a stored location. And web servers always store their inform. Most of the time, they store their anything, usernames, passwords, credit card information, um, inventory in a database. So, I don't. You can play around and see if you can find anything. I do. I did edit, um, but and I don't see that there's a search. There, you can add name, you can do a description, and you can do a price. So another, th my other option is, um, you can do. This cross my scripting, right? Because they're here input field fields, and you can input some JavaScript. So I first test thought looked at the uh, looked at the uh, inspect element and just wanted to see what the input where the input was going. Okay, so I see value. I see a description. Okay. and I see name and value so I thought well how about if I do it on here and uh, just to test it out and you get an error so I know that the so I know that I can't the only thing that the price accepts is um, values of values like B of just numbers so I can't really inject any JavaScript in here. So my next option is okay. Well, maybe let's try and test out the description. And I usually I'll do the script one alert. Okay. And I'm just gonna add this to close out the um, the uh, double quotes that is added. I'm gonna save it. Okay. This, so there's no error. So it seems to be working. So because it's saved. 
let's go back and to the main page and see if maybe my JavaScript worked. And it didn't. Okay, so let's do edit again. Maybe let's try and take out this double quotes. Save. And there you go. And it worked. And but this is this flag is the um, regular flag flag, right? I mean the, from flag two. Sorry. So let's just add to cart. Okay, it does it again. And there's no flag. Hmm. So then I thought, okay, maybe this field right here won't work. So let's just edit. I'll put random stuff and then maybe let's fix this one. And for this one, I decided to just try the image um, source error. I'll save it. It works. Okay. Let's try and go back. And let's add to cart again. Still didn't work, so let's try and go back. There it goes. So when you go and check out the cart, um, that was the air. Um, my issue actually was, I went to instead of add to cart, I put two. I checked here, but yeah, as you can see, the um, script did work, and here's your last flag. And that's it. That's all of the um, all of the three flags. I really enjoyed that we had to brute force the username and passwords because you never know. Some uh, bounty programs may not have a, a a rate limit on how many invalid credentials you can do. So it's definitely allows you to brute force passwords and usernames. I also enjoyed that. I mean, definitely good to good to know how to directory brute force because it will always come in handy that um, the developer may have made a mistake and thought an admin page was hidden, but in reality it's not. So always definitely check that. And the last, obviously, cross site scripting. Cross site scripting is still one of OWASP's top ten vulnerabilities, and it's very important to know because. It is JavaScript is such a powerful tool, and I mean uh, program programming language. So I definitely really enjoyed getting my hands wet with some more JavaScript because I'm not an expert at it. So it was a good practice. But yeah, and that's the rest of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you later.